We looked in his eyes and what did we see? Oh, some toxic personality. Intro. Yo, what's good guys? It is your boy Jason JV and yes, yes, I've been meaning to do a follow-up video from my previous uh, CM Punk video that I did and yes, as you guys can clearly see, uh, we got Punk, you know what I mean, pulled up here, you know, for our visual aid and um, your boy also got a shot of the official statement from Tony Khan um, the owner of AEW Wrestling, All Elite Wrestling, AEW. We have his official statement here. CM Punk has officially been fired. I hate to say deservingly so, but it's deservingly so, given with his behavior. And I'm going to piss off a lot of CM Punk stands, and I really don't give a damn, because I'm seeing people now saying, well, now that Punk's out of AEW, guess what that means? He's He's WWE bound. Mm -hmm. I get it. Never say never. But when Punk is making headlines, right, during his tenure in AEW, but he's making headlines for all the wrong reason, keep in mind uh, WWE has been sold to Endeavor. Um, as of the time of this recording, I have yet to hear if whether or not Endeavor actually closed on, the on that deal. If Endeavor is seeing CM Punk in the news, but for all the wrong reasons, I highly doubt they're going to want someone like that in WWE. They're going to want someone like that on their brand. Be advised, Endeavor also owns the UFC, where Punk did a little MMA fighting there. And, well, we all know how that worked out, now do we? <laughs> anyway, so I wouldn't jump to conclusions so quick, I would not... Say that Punk is automatically WWE bound because I highly doubt WWE is going to want a problem child in their locker room, especially after uh, Triple H. And, you know, what I mean, the experience Triple H had in dealing with Punk, I'm pretty sure Hunter's not going to want to go through all that BS again. That's just me, though. But anyway, so the statement here reads: Statement from All Elite Wrestling and Tony Khan. All Elite Wrestling, AEW, has terminated the wrestler and employment agreements between Philip Brooks, CM Punk, and AEW with cause. Effective immediately, the, the termination was confirmed today by Tony Khan, CEO, general manager, and head of creative of AEW. The termination follows a week-long internal investigation of an incident occurring backstage at an AEW all-in London on Sunday, August the 27th. Ooh, excuse me. Following the investigation, the AEW Discipline Committee, whomever that is, uh, met and later convened uh, with outside legal counsel. Legal counsel, wow. Uh, before making an, in, in a unanimous decision, a unanimous, un I can't read. You blew it. A unanimous recommendation that you blew it or excuse me unanimous recommendation to con that cm punk be terminated with cause con offered the following statement quote phil played an important role an important role within aew and i thank him for his contributions the termination of his aew contracts uh with cause is ultimately my decision and mine alone yeah right <laughs> Uh, of course, I uh, wish I didn't have to share this news. Of course you don't. Uh, but Which may come as a disappointment, you don't say, to uh, many of our fans. Nevertheless, I am making the decision in the best interest of, of, the, many, of the many you blew it. amazing people who make AEW possible every week. Our talent, staff, venue operators, and many others. Who's efforts are unsung but essential to bringing our fans great shows on television and at arenas and stadiums throughout the world end quote well whether it was uh tony khan's decision or or not 
Either way, I say it's about damn time that man grew a spine. And yo, kudos to Tony Khan for finally doing what is right. You know what I mean? He got to understand the man is running a business. And I don't care if CM Punk is a top draw. I don't care if he's, you know, the highest, you know, ticket seller on the roster. It doesn't, you know, um, how do I say this? It doesn't make you immune to disciplinary action. You you F around, act a fool, you, you deserve whatever consequence that comes your way. CM Punk stands can... Uh, can take that however they like. Like I said, they might get a little triggered. They might sound off in my comment section and talk their shit. By all means, go ahead, have at it. You know what I'm saying? But your man fucked up. And you got nobody but him to blame for that. He's got no one but himself to blame for that. So there you go. He's a grown ass man. So let's hold this grown ass man accountable for his actions. It is what it is at the end of the day. Now, in my last video, I did mention that Chris Jericho um, had beef with CM Punk back during their uh, WWE run. Um, I will go ahead and I will play Chris Jericho's um, shoot interview. And it's not a video, it's just audio. So I'm going to keep the CM Punk visual up um, while we listen. And um, not only is it Jericho that is um doing the uh, shoot the shoot interview and where he gives his um where he tells a story about something that happened between him and Punk but Edge is also there as a witness and basically verifies everything that went down between Jericho and Punk on a particular Monday Night Raw. I do remember this Raw that they're about to talk about but anyway Without further ado, y'all, let's go ahead and get right into this shoot. It's not that long. It's only like two minutes, 34 seconds long. So without further ado, I'd like to hear here. You know, I can see where Punk w would, would get like that. I mean, and I know how he gets in his head when he, when he, he doesn't care. He doesn't care what anyone thinks. He doesn't care about anybody's opinion. I remember we had a, this is a, a, a we were working in like Amarillo, Texas. I think and it was Abilene. Abilene. And it was some, uh. It was the day uh, in 2010 when Canada and the U.S. were having the gold medal hockey game. And, and Adam and I were flipping out, and we found a bus, a production bus, to watch the game. And it was me and Punk versus Morrison and Edge. And we were like, listen, we've worked 100 times before. You know, it's 2,000 people out there. Let's just call it in the ring, cool, fine, and dandy. We watched the game. Canada scored in overtime. Go, Canada. Right as my ring music was playing. It's like, yes, they scored. They had the, they had, they had the good, good sense to score before we had to go. And I ran to the ring, and we had our match. And Punk starts. And he continues. And he continues. And he continues. <laughs> and it took me about five minutes to realize he's not going to tag me in. Now, this match Jericho was talking about, like I said, I, I believe it took place on a Monday Night Raw, if not SmackDown. But I do remember watching this match. And, yeah, it was weird. So, and I believe this was when Punk and Jericho were actually, um, were, were feuding. Or at least they were about to feud with each other. And, um, yeah, I remember seeing Jericho just hanging out outside of the ring. And Punk is doing all the work. He's, you know, he's wrestling both Edge and Morrison basically on his, on, his, on his own. It may as well have been a handicap match, basically. And... I remember watching that, and I'm like, "Wait a minute, the, the match is over. I don't, I don't remember Jericho being in the ring at all." And surely enough, Jericho had that look on his face too. And then it hit me. I was like, "Yeah, he never tagged Jericho because," I, and I can see it in Jericho's face. He is not too happy. I, I'll never forget it. And he worked the whole match himself <laughs> as I stood on the apron side. And yep. I was like, you son of a bitch. And I went on the floor. I grabbed popcorn. And some guy threw a can at the back of my head, which made me even madder. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. After and people need to stop throwing things at these guys. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's just not cool, man. You can seriously injure somebody. He said a guy threw a can at him. Dude, that, that's you're, – you're basically you're, – whoever you are throwing things, you're basically cruising for a bruising – you know, from these wrestlers, you know what I mean, that are 
much bigger than the average person. I should know. I've seen these guys in person. Afterwards, I said, I want to see all four of us in the trainer's room. And I lit into him like, what? What, what are you doing? He's like, you're so unprofessional because you guys watch the hockey game. I'm like, dude, you are unprofessional for not tagging me in. People might have paid money to see me today, and you, you robbed that from them. Now, Edge is about to make, make, make a point that I do ultimately agree with. It doesn't matter what these guys were doing right before the match. I mean, obviously, Jericho's a pro. As soon as, Like he said, as soon as he heard his music playing, what did he do? Made his way out to the rink. He was out there. He was ready to go. You know, and Punk's excuse for not including him into the match, not tagging him in, was because, oh, these guys decided to watch a hockey game real quick right before the match. I mean, both Jericho and Edge ha have been doing it, even at that time, they, they have been doing it for so long. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I said, they're pros. You know what I mean? They know exactly what they're doing. You know? So, and Punk at that time, was a new guy. He was the newbie, right? In comparison to Edge and Jericho, as far as um, being in WWE is concerned, or even hell, even being in the wrestling business. So, who is this, this, this rookie upstart to tell these seasoned vets that they're not allowed to watch a hockey game before their match? And my bad, y'all. I need to uh, correct myself. Uh, see, Jericho said it was 2010 when this happened. So that would mean that that year's WrestleMania was WrestleMania 26, which means Jericho and Edge were feuding at the time, which would explain why they're on opposite teams. And I believe Punk was feuding with Rey Mysterio at the time, although I could be wrong, <clears throat> depending on when this match took place. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get back into the shoot. And we got in a big argument, and I was thinking, like, the balls, like the audacity of this dude. Well, it was interesting because I said to him, listen, between the two of us, we've been doing this 40 years. Yeah. We can do it out. See, true. They, they've done it for so long. They know what they're able to uh, get away with, uh, what, what they can do, you know, priority coming out for a match. Out there. And I yeah, get where need, you're... We don't need to explain ourselves to you. I remember well, you said that. And, and, and I said, I get where you're coming from because I've been there. But you're just barking up the wrong tree, and you're going to see exactly where I am in a few years because you are me. And sure enough, he's tweeting the Stanley Cup Finals from a pay-per-view, and I went, yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> now, what do you mean you are me? See, look at that. Dude ended up pulling the yeah, same crap they're doing years later. Me, what do you mean by that? We have very similar mentalities. Gotcha. Yeah. Like when it comes, when enough's enough. Yeah. 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 And, and, and also to, to stand up when you do think something. Right. And, and to, to try and, you know, I want to be a leader here. And, and part of being a leader is standing up for yourself. And if you don't agree with something, then saying it and all of those things. Yeah. And I did the same thing. And sometimes I did bark up the wrong tree. And I was told, ah, that's not the way to do it. Mm, you, you know what? I think mm -hmm. you're right mm -hmm. in hindsight. But sometimes it took hindsight. So there you go, guys. You got Punk trying to, you know, start crap with these guys that. Again, he he was the rookie upstart at the time. These guys are the seasoned vets, you know what I'm saying? So, again, who is the rookie be telling the seasoned vet what they can and can't do, you know what I'm saying, behind the scenes prior to coming up for their match, you know what I mean? It's like, yo, you're working with some solid guys here. You, you're working with some pros that know what they're doing. You're going to be taken care of, you know? So what's more unprofessional? These guys... Trying to watch as much of the hockey game as possible before having to come up to the to the ring for the match, or you refusing to tag in your tag partner so they can get some action. You know what I mean? Because yo, imagine being um, in that crowd at that show. You know what I'm saying? And you're a Jericho fan, right? And and you see Jericho out there, but you only get to see him just hang out in the outside of the ring and not get any ring time in. I don't know about y'all, but if I if I was you know what I mean. One of those people out in that crowd, I'd be pissed. You know what I mean? I, I'd be upset. Be like, how come Jericho never got any ring time? Why did Punk had to, had to hog up the ring time? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be upset. But anyway. So there you go, guys. Another example of uh, CM Punk and his toxic nature. You know what I'm saying? In, um, in the uh, world of professional wrestling. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, I highly doubt... Uh, given, like I said, his history with the way he's behaved, you know, in WWE, in AEW, I highly doubt anyone else is going to want, want to sign him. Some may think, well, what about um, Billy Corgan's NWA? 
I I I don't want to speak for Billy Corgan, but I mean, if Billy Corgan is smart, I think he was he would want to. Um, I think it would be for you know for the sake of his best interest. I think he should stay away from punk as well. Um, because here's the thing, and I listened to Kevin Nash's uh, podcast, the uh, Click This podcast that he does with um, with uh, Sean Oliver, and Nash brought up a fair point. He said, you know what? Punk could have some some mental issues going on and everything. All right, fine, fair. And uh, and and I believe he said something. And I and I could I could be par- and I'm paraphrasing. You know what I mean? But I'm pretty sure he said something along the lines of like, if I was any like wrestling promoter, like some kind of whatever, like a booker or whatever, I would stay away from Punk until he gets help. You know what I mean? Um. I would not want someone like that in my locker room, you know, that is just, you know, causing so much drama with the rest of the roster, making the rest of my roster unhappy, you know, because, uh, and I, I believe he brought up the fact that, because what, what Vince McMahon would do uh, with his uh, roster in the, in the WWE, and this, is, and this has gone on pretty much for years, I mean, back when they were even known as WWF, if someone on the roster is not happy, you know what I mean, for whatever reason, you just let them go. You, you know what I mean? We got an unhappy camper here at camp. Let them go. They, they don't they don't need to be here, you know? Maybe they got some issues or something they need to work out. Maybe they want to go work somewhere else. Whatever the reason is, if they're not happy, let, let just let, let them go. That way, you know, that person's happy. The locker room's happy because they don't have to deal with them everybody's happy win-win you know what i'm saying so yeah i think uh all wrestling promotions just stay away from punk until he gets his shit together till he figures things out because if he is having some sort of mental breakdown some you know mental issues or whatever then he needs to get that sorted out and People should just wait and, and see if once he gets all that figured out, if he has interest in wanting to come back to wrestling, then depending on who's willing to uh, sign him, I think they should just hold off. Just hold off. But anyway, all right, I'm talking in circles. Punk's gone. That's it. It's done. Not really much we, we can do or say about it now. I mean, yeah, we can we, we can bitch about it all we want, or some of us can celebrate it all we want. You know what I mean? And it's not going to change the fact that dude, dude is gone. You know what I mean? And that's all there is to it. Um, hopefully, if if Punk is having some issues, then yeah, hey, hopefully for his sake, he gets it sorted out. Um, you know what I mean? And um, I wish I wish him well, despite the fact that, you know, he was being a total a-hole with everybody from, you know, the WWE to the AEW. All things considered, all in all, hey, I still wish that dude nothing but the best. I don't wish no ill on him. Um, I hope he gets everything worked out and uh, he, he gets better. You know what I mean? And and I don't know. I mean, he is up there in age. Maybe, maybe it's time for him to just stay away from wrestling. You know what I mean? And just enjoy his life. You know? And, uh, yeah. Anyway, y'all feeling the vibes. Do all the YouTube thing things to support your boy. Support the channel. You know what I'm saying? Oh, don't forget. I also got, you know, my store tab now. My spring store tab as well as my store shelf beneath the viewing screen. You know what I mean? So if you guys want to buy some merch, hey, go go hit it up. You know what I'm saying? Um, that that would greatly help out the channel immensely. And that would definitely help me out. And it would be very much appreciated. And your boy will be forever grateful for that. So, yeah. All right, y'all. Till next one. Y'all have a blessed one. All right? Peace. Jason JV on YouTube. Uh, What's up with you, Jason? JV. What up, Jason? JV. Just sending love, peace, and blessings to you. JC, you are my homeboy, my guy. Don't call me guy, pal. Don't call me buddy, pal. Much love to you, JV. Chris Calico. Cali, baby. Oh. What's up, JV? My name's Jimmy Badger. I'm one half of the next video. I'm going to say what's up, JV. Keep your motherfucking head up. Uh, uh, I don't know why you're sad. If you're sad, if you're sad, you're sad. If you're happy, I'm going to be too happy. I'm going to be expecting shit. It's like doing curves all the time. So you ready to be on the swerve. So subscribe, tap the little bell, turn on the notifications. And if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Eat it. Yeah.